So today I have Dr. Paris Parikh and Tanya Renders here with me today to talk about asthma and allergies and how patients living with asthma symptoms um, participated in a study. And we're here to talk about the results today because I think that it's pretty interesting. So welcome to the show. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks for having us. Sure. So you guys conducted a study of both um, kids and adults who ha are asthmatic. So tell me a little bit about the study that you guys have on OpenAsthma.com. So Allergy and Asthma Network partnered with Beringer Ingelheim Farm Pharmaceuticals to conduct a study of approximately 3,000 Americans, all over 18, and to really help to identify, A, how well controlled their asthma was, B, what their severity of asthma was, and how it was limiting their day activities of daily living, and then finally to talk about how they are interacting with their healthcare professionals and where some of those gaps may occur in achieving the optimal health results that we're all looking for. So what was the most interesting finding or the most alarming finding out of your study? Well, one of the most interesting findings were that 70% um, of patients who thought that they were well controlled actually were not. Um, and then on the flip side, 84% um, of their doctors um, you know, had a completely different uh, perception or idea of what well-controlled was than their patients did. Okay, and that's what I was going to ask, like how it's interesting that they were responded that they're well-controlled but actually still have symptoms that led on that they were not. So I'm, I'm interested to learn more about that gap. So why do you think that that is? Well, we get call hundreds of calls at the network each and every week. And when we're talking to families, what we hear consistently is that they say they're doing fine, and it's because they're accepting an impaired way of living. And then when we dig a little deeper, when we ask the right questions, what we learn is that, in fact, they're limiting their exercise programs, they're limiting the way that they do chores, they're missing much more work and school than they should be because of their asthma symptoms. And so that's that disconnect where people just begin to think this is normal when, in fact, they could do much better. So I think some of the interesting findings is, uh, or part of the background for the study is that there is a significant number of American people that are classified as having asthma. It's 22 million people, so that's not a small number. And then 55% of the patients who were taking at least one treatment still continue to experience symptoms. So even though they were taking what was prescribed by their provider, it wasn't well controlled. So what questions, I'm, I'm big on patient engagement and advocacy. So are there any specific questions that patients should be asking their doctors about um, their disease control and if or not their whether or not their medication is working? Well, the most important thing is um, that they should be alerting physicians of their symptoms because um, if you are having uh, coughing, wheezing, shortness of breath, chest tightness, even more than once or twice a week, that's a sign that you may not be controlled. and your current medication isn't enough. And even one or two trips to the ER or your doctor's visit for an asthma attack in a year is another sign you're not well controlled. So often, um, you know, patients will come in and say they're feeling great, but then um, it's up to both the patient and doctor to tease out, you know, what, what do they really mean by that? And often when we dig deeper, we find that they are waking up at night coughing or they are having daily symptoms. So it's, re it's really important on both ends. Um, to ask the right questions and also report the right symptoms to your physician. Okay, and this study, the results of the findings are available on openasthma.com, correct? Yes, yes. You can find much more about the study and how we conducted the, sur the, the survey, the respondents, the 3,000 Americans, as well as the 850 healthcare professionals, and also some t helpful tips on how to better engage with your healthcare provider as a patient. Because as you said, it is a two-way street. It's, it's, the communication um, is certainly dependent upon both the patient and the healthcare provider. So check out o openasthma.com. Okay, and if possible, can we go over a couple more of those tips for specifically for patients, um, things that they should be aware of and communicating well with their doctor? I know you mentioned the symptoms, but is there anything like more specific? Absolutely. So if your asthma is waking you up at night, that is a, a significant symptom that you should certainly communicate and talk with your doctor about. If you're missing work or school, again, a significant thing that you should be sure and tell your doctor. It's always helpful to sort of keep a, a diary or track those things 
And when you have questions about your condition, write them down so that when you do get in front of your physician, you can have those more impactful discussions. So those are, those are like considered what I call quality of life issues. So, I mean, it's not, you know, where you're like gravely ill or anything, but if you're having to miss work or, um, you know, like you said, not being able to get quality sleep, those are significant things that, you know, what we refer to as the normal or average person does not have trouble with. So if you feel like you're not keeping up with what the normal or average is, you should certainly alert your doctor because their goal is to kind of help you, you know, be able to manage your disease so you can be as quote unquote normal and average as possible. <laughs> Absolutely. And they can't help you if they don't know. So it really exactly. is about patient empowerment and asking those right questions and guiding the conversations to make sure that you're getting the optimal health outcomes. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time today, ladies. Thank you. Yeah.